Vietnam on two wheels. That's Dan. Just being Dan. And that's me always looking unhappy on camera. Unless you catch me swinging from a vine like Tarzan. In this episode, we're traveling from the hectic, busy streets of Ho Chi Minh all the way to the beautiful beaches and rolling sand dunes of Moy Ni. Before we can go pick up our bikes, we gotta go get some helmets. In Vietnam, it's required to wear a helmet, but holy shit, the things that pass as a helmet in this country would blow your mind. Half the helmets have little cutouts in them for a ponytail to stick out, or they're basically just a baseball cap with a chin strap. I definitely wanted something with a little bit more face protection on it. After wandering the streets for quite a while and asking everybody we could find, we finally found a cool little cafe racer shop that had a pretty decent selection of helmets. After trying on almost every helmet in the building, and trying to talk Dan into buying one that was painted like a sweet American flag for over an hour, we each finally decided on a helmet we liked, and I was blown away with what you can get for $80 in Vietnam when it comes to a helmet. I would have never expected to have the quality that they did at that price. Now we had the helmet thing situated, the real fun could start, and we were gonna go get our bikes. We didn't know exactly what to expect. We'd only talked to the owner of Dragon Bike Tours through email for the last couple months getting ready for this trip. It was a short walk across town, and once we got there, I couldn't have asked for it to be more simple. Signed a little bit of paperwork, got a rundown on how everything worked, handed us the keys, and we were able to ride away. I really can't recommend these guys enough. They made our trip as good as they possibly could, and if we would have been on anything else, it wouldn't have been half as much fun. They even spent a little bit of time giving us a rundown how everything on the bike works and what to do if something was to break. Luckily, that never happened. They even gave us the option if we wanted a trunk for free. At first, I was kind of against it, in hindsight, I'm really glad we had it. It really was a lifesaver and made our day-to-day -day life a lot easier. All that was left was to ride back to the hostel in the middle of rush hour traffic in Ho Chi Minh City. I'm not gonna lie, I was real nervous. I've spent a lot of my life on motorcycles, a lot bigger and a lot faster than this one, but it was definitely the most nervous I've ever been. We decided the best way to escape Saigon City would be under the cover of darkness. We jumped on our bikes and left about 4.30, heading east towards the ferry. The ferry was still pretty busy, considering it was a Friday, and a lot of locals like to get out of town and head to the beaches. The ferry crossing itself only takes about 15 minutes. We knew we had about a five hour to six hour ride in front of us, and it finally felt like the trip was really starting. I couldn't even explain how excited I was to get to riding. Once you get off the ferry, it can be kind of deceiving. You get a small little break where you pass through a bunch of rubber tree farms. Then you're into an area that's full of just nothing but factories for quite a while. The traffic gets pretty heavy and kind of sketchy to say the least. It only took about 20 minutes of riding through this area before Dan almost decapitated himself on the back of a dump truck. We rode for several hours till we got to a town called Long Hai. Long Hai is a surprisingly busy little town, but it's also, for better or for worse, the closest beach to Saigon. However, the beach is not great, and most of the accommodations and facilities are aimed towards domestic tour groups. During the high season, it can be almost impossible to find a room here. I would definitely recommend stopping, grabbing a coffee, and move on like we did. You're not really missing much, and there's way better things ahead of you. Once you're on the coastal road, the ride really becomes a lot of fun. I still just couldn't get over the fact that I was riding a motorcycle in Vietnam. Once on the ocean road, the traffic really starts to die down and you can start to have a little bit more fun. If anything, probably a little too much fun as I kept getting distracted and realizing I was doing double the speed limit every time I looked down. We ended up staying at a place called Moi Ni Backpackers Village. And if you want to party, it's absolutely the place to stay. They had an amazing pool, an awesome bar, and the staff was fantastic. They made sure everybody was engaged in games every night, the rooms were clean, and the food was actually pretty decent. The next morning we got up early and decided to go on an excursion through the hostel. They took us to the fishing village, the white sand dunes, 
the red sand dunes, and the ferry stream. The first stop for the day was the ferry stream. I'd seen so many pictures of this place doing research before the trip, and at first it wasn't what I expected. When you first enter the stream, there's honestly a quite a bit of garbage everywhere. As you get a little farther up the stream and past the little stores that sell you stuff, most of the garbage goes away. It's kind of a fun hike. It was a really hot day when we were doing it, so it was nice to be walking in some water, even if it was only ankle deep through most of it. At certain points, the water does get about waist deep, but I'm sure that depends on the time of year. At the end of the ferry stream, there's a little tiny waterfall you can jump in and cool off. And then right above it, there's also a couple little shacks serving food. For us, there was no time to stop and eat, so we all crammed back into the little tiny jeep looking thing and took off to the fishing village. The fishing village was actually really cool. I liked seeing everybody use the little round fishing boats. And we were there early enough that there was a lot of people still bringing in their catch from the morning. On the tour, they gave us about 20-30 minutes to walk around and check out the village, which was honestly plenty of time to take a couple pictures, get to see some things, grab a bite to eat, and get out, and take off to the white sand dunes. It was a little bit of a drive to get to the white sand dunes, and I would have much rather been on my motorcycle than stuffed in that crappy jeep. Once you get out there, they charge you $20 to jump in a second jeep, and drive you out onto the dunes, or if you're comfortable, you can take an ATV out by yourself. Me personally, I've spent a lot of time in the dunes. I didn't really think it was worth it, but if you've never been out on dunes like this, it's a definite must do, and you'll enjoy it. The last stop for the day was the red sand dunes for sunset. Holy crap, this had to be the best sunset I saw of the whole trip, and there was a lot of fantastic ones. The dunes can be honestly pretty busy, there's people everywhere sledding, having a good time. It's hard to find a spot where you get a view with nobody in front of you. It was an absolute perfect way to end the day and to relax a little bit before we went out and partied for one last night in Moini. Cause tomorrow it was up bright and early and off to Natrang. If I did the trip again, I would absolutely add at least one more night, maybe two to Moini. There's so much to do there and so many things to see that it's impossible to really fit it all in in two days. Thanks for watching this, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If so, make sure you smash that like button and get ready for the next episode. It's coming your way.